And then these last two values here, we have high volume and spaced with a mean of 73.167. So let's see if we can find that. High volume and then the blue line spaced. Okay, so that is 73.167. And then finally, we have cramming at high volume, which is equal to 72.667. So that's the green circle here, cramming at high volume. And the difference between these two points, if you took 73.167 and subtracted 72.667 from it, you would get a half point difference. So the fact that this interaction is significant, recall that that means that the lines are significantly non-parallel. That means that the distance here, which is a half point, is significantly different from this distance here which is 9.833. So these two values are in fact significantly different. And that's what would produce the non-parallel lines. If you thought about for a minute, if this was a half point and this difference was also a half point, then how would the lines look? Well, they would be parallel, right? They would line up in a parallel fashion. But these two points, the test of the interaction effect is in fact testing 0.5 versus 9.833, and those two values are in fact significantly different. So what does this mean? Well, the interaction effect means that to know the impact of study method, for example, this is one way we could look at it, spaced versus cramming. So in other words, if we want to know what is the impact of what group a person is in in terms of the study method, the interaction says that it depends on the volume level. Let's take a look at that. For high volume, ask yourself, is there much of a difference in what group you're in here, whether you're in space, the blue, the top one here, or cramming the bottom circle? Does it really make a big difference on exam scores? It doesn't, right? It's only a half point on the exam, which isn't that much. So for high volume, there's not really much of a difference between spaced and cramming. And in fact, we'll test this in our next video to see if it's significant. But for now, we can say there's a very small difference between spaced and cramming at high volume. But then you want to look over here at the no music or no volume and ask yourself, is the difference here small? Well, we can see, first of all, there's a big gap between our two points. And we saw that that was equal to, once again, 9.833 points. And you can see here, unlike for high volume, there's really a substantial difference between these two points or these two means. And in fact, if the person has spaced study method under the no music condition or no volume, they do quite well on the exam. Notice how the mean is much higher than the other three conditions. And it's equal to 84, which we saw in this table up here. The none spaced was 84. So we see that the interaction indicates that the impact of study method depends on volume. For high volume, it really doesn't make much of a difference which study method a person's in. In other words, they do about the same. But when there's no volume and people study for an exam, studying under the spaced condition results in substantially higher scores than studying under cramming. So once again, we could say that the interaction effect means that the effective study method, spaced versus cramming, depends on the volume level. And once again, at high volume, there's a very small difference between the two study methods. We saw that right here. It was a half point. At no volume, however, using the spaced study method led to much higher scores than using cramming. So, in other words, to know the impact of study method, we need to know the specific level of volume. That's a classic interaction effect. And another way we could do that, we could just summarize it very briefly. Study method depends on volume. So, in other words, the impact of study method depends on the level of volume a person received. Virtually no difference for high volume. Big difference for no volume with space doing much better. 
Okay, before we close with the interaction, I want to show you one other plot we could produce, which you'll see these a lot in practice, so it's good to know as well. Okay, so to do that, we want to go ahead and go to Graphs, and then Legacy Dialogs, and then select Bar.